God is good. God is good. All the time. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this gorgeous Sunday morning. We are glad you're here, uh, worshiping in spirit and in truth. It's a gorgeous day to be in God's house. And we want to welcome everybody, especially those who are visiting with us. Uh, let us know who you are by uh, registering in the registration pad. that will be coming up and down the pew rack. We have also, on September 30th, a date set aside to receive new members to our congregation. If you are interested in joining Fields, let me know by uh, September 10th and so that we can get that, uh, get that rolling here. I have a couple of announcements to make. First, our Chords group is going to be meeting on uh, next, next Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock, so come join that young adult ministry. Also, uh, the content this service will be starting September 9th, at 11 o'clock. In fact, it's getting kind of close to 11 o'clock now when I'm starting, too. So I'll be starting at 11 o'clock, so put that on your calendar. And also on September 9th, there's going to be uh, blood pressure monitoring. In case any, anybody's blood pressure is high, we'll try to lower that. But, hmm. um, and then the book club's going to start September 9th as well. Uh, is Joe here? No. Rally Sunday is September 9th. Come join us. In fact, the folks here come an hour early. Uh, because it's going to be time that, that the Sunday school will be started and, and you'll get to know your Sunday school teachers and, and everything's going to be happening, so come. We're going to have food, we're going to have fun, we're going to have food after this service too. It's going to be a hoot, a lot of things. Uh, kids, 6th grade to 12th, also going to have a bonfire that night. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. Put it on your calendar and, uh, and it will be, a, it will be uh, a blast to be sure. I think that's all I have, Larry. That's all. That's all. That's good stuff. Let us worship. Let's worship. All right. This mor good morning. Good morning. This morning's call to worship is about grace. Does anyone know what this is? Looks like a joist it's, hanger. It, it, it well, is. It's, it's, it's exactly like a joist hanger. It's called a, it's a beam hanger. It's a bracket. And what this is used for in construction is where two boards meet together, where there might be a crucial load, this reinforces the connection between two members of an assembly. Now, the idea there is if unusual stress or loads come on this building, this assembly, this house, this helps things not come apart and have a, a, a calamity, a disaster. Now, as Christians, we are connected like the members in that house. And grace, when we choose to extend it to one another, strengthens our connection so that when stress comes or trouble comes or a load comes, we don't fall apart and collapse. And as members in the body of Christ, we're called to love one another and be the glue that holds the house together. So this morning as we worship, I would like to invite you to stand and um, allow God to shed his grace upon us just like he did at the cross. So let's let's stand and do some singing together. Men of faith rise up and sing of the great glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak. In your brokenness complete. Shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior to all. Lord of
and the West. Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. Someone near you or someone across the room, someone across the aisle? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Good. I'll take good another morning, one of those good gym handshakes. Praise Him, my great Redeemer. I will yet 
Someone say that. There's still hope for me today because the God of heaven loves me. You and God make a majority. Amen. You may be seated. Today's scripture is Psalm 84, and it can be found on page 584 in the Pew Bibles. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pil pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. This is the word of the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. I had a conversation with somebody Friday night, and they asked me a couple questions, and I had to take some thought. They wanted to know my opinion about God. And I, you know, that's a dangerous thing to get into in a brief conversation because, not dangerous, it's just, you have to be careful to say just, you don't have all night, you know? And uh, I said, well, there's pretty much three categories of people. People that don't believe in God or that count God as irrelevant. People that think they are God or people that need God. 
It really comes down to that simple. And um, taking that scripture in mind that, that uh, Kathy just read and this next song, that would be us. We need God. He is mighty to save. Oh, 
Good morning, everybody. It's a, it's a joy to be in God's house this day. It's a joy to worship. It's a joy to have friends and family. I don't know about you, but I feel awful good. Because God is good. All the time. A lot of good things happening in the church and in our community and in our nation. In the church, I mean, we have all kinds of ministries that are starting up. We, we have our youth, we have our children, we have other mission stuff going on. September 9th, I know I've already talked about that once, but I'll talk about it again. It's going to be a hoop. So make sure that's the start off and some really neat stuff. And, and so we, with joy, serve the Lord. With, with that, there are many things that are in need of prayer this day, and we lift those things up to God. I will let you know that a longtime member of the church, uh, Carol Miller, has died, and her funeral will be tomorrow. A uh, visitation here at the church at 11 o'clock, followed by the service at noon. And the family wanted to make sure that we were all aware of that. Um, also, if you would please pray for, uh, pray for the Swigert family, for Kelly, for Michelle, June Miller's uh, daughter, will be having surgery on Wednesday, and Roy Van Vallette, who's on the, on the prayer list, will be having surgery on Friday. Are there other joys, concerns of the church? He's still recovering, uh, so prayers for him. Uh, he's home now, I hope. Okay, good. Continue prayers for Nick. Good morning. <clears throat> we have a great birthday lady next to me. I'm not going to tell her her age. That's up to her. Happy birthday, Jane Bender. Happy birthday, Jane. <laughs> All right. Celebration. Other joys, concern? I have a joy tomorrow. My parents celebrate their 52nd wedding anniversary. All right. Celebration for an anniversary. I have a joy and I have a concern. A concern for my neighbor, Carol. She has MS and she had very serious back surgery on Wednesday. And joy for Brooke. I've had her on prayer train for a while. Um, she went through her three days of being in the clinic. They haven't found anything. Yesterday she had her first Pee Wee football game and made the first touchdown. All right. Sounds great. Anyone else? Let us then go to God in silent prayer. Gracious and amazing God, author of our salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we gather here this morning to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done, all that you continue to do, and all the blessings that you have offered to us. Lord God, and especially we give you praise and thanksgiving 
for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who went to the cross to save us from the grave. And Lord God, we give you eternal thanks and praise for that gift of everlasting life. Lord God, as we gather here, there is so much to be thankful for. We give you thanks for our friends and family, our neighbor, those we know, and especially those we don't know, Lord God. We give you thanks for all the mission and ministries that are going on through our congregation. Uh, some of the new things that are happening, we just pray your watch care upon all those who will be um, leading that. And we anticipate a great time on September 9th. We, we do pray for your Holy Spirit to rest upon us. Uh, during that time and, and up into that time, Lord God. Lord, we pray for all those who are traveling this day, travel blessings upon them. Uh, Lord, we celebrate birthdays. Uh, happy birthday to all, Lord God, that you've given another opportunity to do your work uh, for another year. Lord God, we, we do pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, and especially this morning we lift up to you the friends and family of Ernie and the family and friends of Carol Miller. Lord God, may their grief and mourning turn to joy with a certain hope and affirmation of everlasting life for the ones they have lost and, and the certainty, too, that they shall be rejoined with them and all the other saints who have gone on before them in your house, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Lord God, we lift up to you your world and its people and its leaders. We pray for our great nation and our leaders. Lord, we pray for our community, our community leaders, our schools, our teachers, administrators, support staff, our children, our parents. Lord God, we just lift everybody up to you, Lord, because you have the shoulders, you have the strength and the power to overcome anything that, that may be fallen in their direction, Lord God. We give you thanks for being with us. Lord God, we also pray for those who are, who are searching for you, those who are frustrated, those who are just plain angry. Lord God, we just pray your blessing upon them as well. Lord, we... We ask all these things in your precious name who, who carries all these folks um, in his hands. For Brooke and Dorothy and Bill and Dan, for Mike and Regina and Terry and Carol, for Fran and Roy and Corey and Jenna and Holly and Tom, for the Swigerts, for Kelly and Michelle. And Lord, we just pray that you heal their bodies. Nourish their faith, Lord. Set them all rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. Now, Lord God, give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may, through our hands, through our voice, through our feet, through everything you have given us, to continue the work that you have begun in each of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a children's chat. Okay, guys, I'm over here here this morning. Oop. I'll get down here with you. What is this? A bike helmet. That's true. What do you do with this? So you protect your head on the bike. So you put it on your head like this. And so if you fall, what happens? You don't hurt your head. Well, what God calls us to do, just like we put on a helmet to protect us, I used to wear shin pads and all that stuff too. I, was, I wasn't very good on a bike. But just like wearing a helmet of uh, the bike, God gives us other things too. God, in fact, Paul, St. Paul said in his letter that, that God gives us a helmet but a helmet of salvation. In other words, God gives us everything we need to protect us too. So we wear helmets when we ride our bikes or do rollerblading or roller skating or, or ice skating. Some of us do that anyhow. But God gives us a helmet and God gives us all, all kinds of padding and everything. Um, so we can be protected, our heart can be protected that, 
that we still will feel the love of God no matter where we are. And that's pretty cool. So, so think about when you, wear your, when you wear your helmet to ride your bike, and you guys all ride, well, until you learn how to ride a bike. You know how to ride a bike yet? You wear your helmet. Well, that's good. So do I, most of the time. And, uh, and I'm glad you do. So just when you wear your helmet, remember God also has given you a helmet too. And everything you need to protect your heart uh, because God loves you an awful lot. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for protecting us and thank you for, for keeping us safe and keeping us strong. Be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for coming up this morning. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and power from on high. Now, Lord God, be with me as I proclaim your message. And may your message come through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture lesson is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6. One of my favorite sections in the letter to the Ephesians, uh, beginning in the 10th chapter, 10th verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'm just going to read one more verse here. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication love that. And I love that first verse. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power put on the whole armor of God so that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. In other words, God's going to give us everything we need to get through our lives. And as I was thinking about this text and, the, and throughout the week, I was thinking about all the options that our world gives to us. There was a day when you could buy a car, whatever color you wanted, as long as it was black. Now all that's changed quite a bit. Last week I went to the store and I wanted to buy a white shirt. A white short sleeve shirt. It took me 15 minutes to find a white short sleeve shirt. You know why? Because of all the options. You see, I'm, I'm not a shopper. I'm a buyer. I go in and I want a white shirt, and if somebody tells me I need a purple shirt, no, I want a white shirt. I don't look at the purple shirts. I don't look at the yellow shirts. I look at the white shirts, because that's what a buyer does. Well, with all these options, you can be shopping for a half an hour. For some of you, that might not seem like a lot, but that's an eternity for me at Macy's. But anyhow, we have all these options. And it would be nice if we had fewer choices that could be made. Less stuff we have to deal with. Less things that we, we need to put on our calendar. It would be nice if life were a whole lot simpler. Not only that, 
on the consumer level, we have so many options. We also have other options as well. We can decide so many things that we can watch on the web or on television. We have all these things that are happening. And some of the people, as we watch things on the web and on TV, we begin to believe them. And one of the things that, that many people are saying is that the church is, is becoming more and more irrelevant which, within our society. In fact, that may have come from this pulpit as well once in a while. But consider this. On a given Sunday and Saturday, over 50 million people go to church and worship God Amen. in this country. Now, add up everybody attending a professional football game, professional baseball game, an NBA game, college football, high school football, in a given week, it wouldn't even come close to the 50 million or more people coming to worship. What's that say? That says that the church is not irrelevant, but a lot of times what happens is we all come to church and we want to live in peace and we do live in peace. The majority of people are good, but that's not what we hear. We don't hear that, that, that most are nonviolent, most want to live a time of peace. Yet we choose to listen to such things or it's chosen for us to listen about all the things that are going on in our, in our world. Mass killings, economic woes, violent conflicts throughout the world, the political discourse that we're listening to on the television, I don't know about you, but makes me absolutely sick, where there's character assassinations instead of uh, um, there should be a priority on the substantive issues of this nation, but rather we just start beating everybody up and nothing gets done. And so we see all that stuff happening as one of the 50 million people that are in worship on Sunday morning and we, have, we get disgusted and we get frustrated and often acquiescing to the very lifestyles that we abhor. We put our hands up and say, I can't do this. We begin to retreat saying, I don't have the time. I, I, can't, I can't keep on keeping on. And so we retreat back. We come to church on Sunday morning. And we we want to kind of stay away from the rest of the world because the rest of the world just um, seems to be uh, uh, losing a wheel or two. So what happens? We have so many things that we can choose to do. We have so many options in our life. Yet we need to seek a different path. We need to take away some of those options. We need to take a look that, uh, to what is right and what is true. But that takes power, power from on high. We can't do that ourselves because the world would rather have us all taken up with looking at three dozen colors of shirts, would rather have us taken up looking at the news and all the bad stuff, rather than what God would have us taken up to do. We say that we don't have time to serve the church, that we don't have time to serve God, we don't have time to do this, we don't have time to do that. And what Paul is saying when he says this is not a, a, a battle of flesh and blood, it's a spiritual battle. Whenever we start saying to God, but I don't have the time, whenever we start saying, what, after reading, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power, put on the whole armor of God so that you may withstand the wiles of the devil, but we're putting a big but in front of God. That really didn't sound very good, did it? I, I, I apologize for that. But it's true. When we start putting butts in front of what God commands us to do, it's no longer a battle of flesh and blood. It is now a spiritual battle. 
And the spiritual battle is that we need to accept not the way society tends to be taking us, but where God would want us to go. And what we may not understand is we have the power of the universe to be able to do that. I was thinking about a Lamborghini. I don't know why. I've never sat in a Lamborghini. I've only seen one in my life. I don't own one. It's probably about the value of this whole building. When I thought about sitting in the seat of a Lamborghini, it's kind of nice. But it does nothing, does it? The fastest production, well, non-production car in the world. If you sit in the seat, nothing happens, does it? If you turn the engine on, you, you hear that purr, or probably more like a deep roar. But still, nothing happens, does it? It's not until you put that vehicle in the first gear and put the accelerator on that you will know the power that that vehicle has. The same with God. If all we're doing is sitting in the pew and saying, boy, God is powerful, God is great, God is good, but never put that in the practice, what happens? Absolutely nothing. But when we put on the armor of God, when we put on Christ, when we put on the power of the Holy Spirit, we begin to, to know what it is to have that full armor. We begin to know what it is to have God uh, taking control of our life. We may, though, feel that even through all this stuff, that we may be ill-equipped to do what God has called us to do. We may feel ill-equipped to serve God. We may feel ill-equipped when we're coming up to Rally Sunday. Oh, and you're going to have fun going down the hall. It's down that way. And see all the ministries that are going on in the church and all the opportunities you have to serve. You can look at a poster and say, you know what? I've never taught Sunday school in my life. I can't do it. Oh, really? You can't do it? But God has empowered you to do it. God has called you to do it. As soon as we start saying we can't do it, guess what? It becomes a spiritual battle. We don't know the power of God until we put God in practice in our own life. Or what would happen if, 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 if life gave us an economic or a health curveball? We say, we can't handle this. We've been to question our own ability to handle that. Or anything else that the world may put before us. We begin to question God. Have you ever questioned God before? I'll put my hand up. I wonder why God does the things God does. I question God quite a bit. Sometimes I yell at God. Never swear at God. But I yell at God and say, why? Well, sometimes that happens. But guess what? We're not alone. So did Jeremiah. So did Isaiah. So did Moses. So did Ezekiel. So did St. Paul. So did St. Peter. We could go on and on and on and on. Len's doing the study of women in the Bible. If we did a study of men in the Bible, what you'd find is 98% of them question their calling to God. Then what about Job? I was thinking about Job as well. Now here's a guy who lost everything. I got in big trouble a couple of years ago here with the Thursday night Bible study talking about Job. Mary, and you're nodding your head. Yeah, I sure did. Well, Job was talking to God. Well, not really. God was doing the talking. Tonight, after you read Ephesians 6, read Job 38 to 41. And what you'll hear is this. God tells Job, sit down. I am going to talk. And you are going to listen. Sit down and shut up. And so what did God tell Job? You have a problem? You think you can't come to me? I'll tell you what. 
Were you there when I laid the foundation of the universe? Were you there when I was walking in, in the bottom of the ocean looking um, at Leviathan? Were you there when I put the clouds in the sky? Were you there, Joe? Were you there, Joe, when I gave the wisdom of the ages to the people? Were you there, Job? Tell me. Speak to me. And this goes on and on and on and on. And it's a hoot. You know, when you read it tonight, read it a couple of times. And then, and then finally Job says, I know you can do all things. Therefore, I repent. And I will give all to you. Pretty cool. But oftentimes what happens in our lives, we start saying, Lord, I know you can do all things. Therefore, I repent and will give all to you, but look, I can't. I know but. Again, we always put a big but in front of what God calls us to do. I know you give me all I need, God. I know you're giving me the grace. I know you're giving me the power. I know you're giving me the armor. I get the salvation helmet and all that kind of thing. I know the Holy Spirit. I know, but. And God comes back. But what, Tom? But what? I'm giving you everything. So as Jim Cimbala of the Brooklyn Tabernacle writes, whatever God calls us to do, God will also be faithful to equip us to do it. You see, when God calls us, God's not going to leave us alone. God's going to give us the armor. God's going to give us everything. God's going to give us the words and will equip us to do what God has called us to do. God's not going to leave us orphaned. God's not going to leave us alone. God's going to give us the strength. God's going to give us everything to overcome the slings and arrows of this world, to go a more excellent way. You see, we're equipped again with the power of the universe. The Spirit of God gives us strength to overcome the world anything that's set in our way, to overcome what we may perceive from television or whatever like that. Just remember that we are a part of over 50 million people on a Sunday morning sitting and worshiping God. You see, people, God will put people around us to give us the strength to continue. It's a spiritual battle. Anytime we start saying, but to God, it's a spiritual battle. But God, it's a spiritual battle. When we start to question, it's a spiritual battle. But once we begin to accept what God has given to us, we start seeing life in a new way. I've been accused of looking at life through rose-colored glasses. A couple of churches ago, this guy said, Preacher, that was when I was down south. I didn't have a name down there. I was just preacher. I was telling the folks between services that I went to the, uh, the food line down there, and when you hear somebody yell, Hey, preacher, four other guys turn around and say, <laughs> you know, We don't know. But, but anyhow, this guy comes up to me and says, Tom, or preacher, all you see is things through rose-colored glasses. I said, Thank God for that. Thank God I can look and, and, and buy the glory of God, by the grace of God, I can look at, a, at, at our congregation, and when I look at you, I see the love of God, I see grace, I see power, I see joy, I see friends. God, that's a good thing. And if that takes rose-colored glasses, then it takes rose-colored glasses. If all we see is the goodness in the world, thank God for that. Thank God for that. So when we pick up the Holy Spirit, we start seeing through God-colored glasses. We start seeing life how God would have us to see it, how, how God would see the people around us and would set in place those people to help us with the calling that God has given to us, would make room on our calendar for God. Pretty cool stuff. 
God will equip us well for doing the work of God. We are well equipped, saints, to do the work of God, to be positive in our relationship with each other, in our relationship with God, to walk with God. For it's far better to walk with the sun on our back, and I don't know whether that's S-U-N or S-O-N, or rain in our face. God will give us the positive attitude God will give us everything we need. So what if God gives, or the world gives us options? God will call us to choose the most excellent option. We can do it, saints. No buts. For when we are equipped by God, self-doubt melts away and replaced by hope of a new day. We're well equipped to understand that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you take nothing else out of this service, remember that God will never leave you and that nothing, nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks for the privilege of serving you, for, for helping us as you call us to, to use the gifts you've given to us. Lord, bless the gifts we're going to lay before you here this morning, that they may be a blessing to you and give glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There be shouts of joy, and all the trees of the fields will clap, will clap their hands, and all the trees of the clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. And you go out with your heart. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. Shouts of joy and all the trees of the fields will clap.
Somebody this week. Have a good week.